In this video, we're going to be replacing the passenger side CV axle shaft. All right, we're going to take our wheel off and use a 22 millimeter socket. All right, so we're going to take off our spindle nut, but you can see it's been staked in or punched in here. So we're just going to use a flat screwdriver. We're going to open up that so it will rotate. With a 36 millimeter socket, we'll go ahead and remove the axle nut. All right, so now before we go ahead and remove our axle shaft, just take note of how far in your axle shaft sits into the rotor. All right, just mental note. And then we can go ahead and push our shaft backwards, which in this case isn't really moving, so we'll use a hammer just to get it going. and you can see it bouncing back and forth there, which means it's mostly free. All right, so we're gonna remove a cotter pin. We're gonna use a small pair of bent needle nose pliers in the end, and we're gonna pull away. We're gonna use a 90 degree hook tool to pull out the side and remove our cotter pin. All right, we're gonna use a 19 millimeter wrench on our castle nut for our lower ball joint. All right, so we're gonna try a couple different things. What we have to do now is separate our control arm ball joint from the knuckle. Pickle fork is gonna be our last option to separate here. We don't wanna do damage to the boot. So what we're gonna do we're gonna try and put our castle nut back on, a couple of threads and a pry bar. We're gonna try and pry that ball joint downward. Well, what you don't wanna do is pry up against your CV, your, your axle. So we're prying against the knuckle itself here. So we've jumped right to pickle fork. We're gonna do our best not to damage the boot. So we're using just a small hammer, some light taps to get it in where we need to. All right, so we have to drop our control arm, but you can see with enough force, it's barely moving. So we're gonna loosen this back control arm bolt here. It's gonna be a 22 millimeter socket. We're not gonna take the bolt out. We're just gonna loosen it up. There is a captured nut on the back side. So we're just loosening this side up. Now we should be able to drop our control on and take the ball joint right out. All right, so now at this point, we need to pull our knuckle assembly away and push the CV axle out of the knuckle. So with one side, we're gonna use just a small pry bar and push on the knuckle or push on the CV while we pull the knuckle. So we're gonna to continue to work that CV axle shaft out of the knuckle. We're gonna get as much play as we can on that knuckle and push the axle shaft out. All right, now the goal is to take this axle shaft out 
this way, out towards the front of the vehicle and down. Uh, up top here, you have an oil filter that you're just gonna have to be careful and cautious of. So now we're gonna continue to push our knuckle away, pull our axle shaft out. Okay. Now that you have it on this side of the control arm, what we do now, don't pull on your axle shaft. You're gonna separate it inside the boot in the rear. So what we need to do now is get under the vehicle and push it forward. We're gonna use a pry bar. And just push it forward without pulling on the axle shaft. All right, what we're gonna do is use a small pry bar. Get between the axle and the housing. And just hammer that, tap that in to separate. So we have a long, what we used here is a long extension and just hammered from the back side of our axle shaft out. Uh, ideally, you would use a long drift punch here. Just didn't happen to have one handy. So a long extension it was. Luckily, we weren't doing too much hammering where it didn't need to be an impact resistant. So now, at this point, we can go ahead and pull out our CV shaft as a unit and just slide it straight out. So right here is where we were punching, right on this lip here. All right, so what we're doing here is we have two pick tools and we're removing the old set ring on our intermediate shaft. This is a little finicky. A little patience, you'll get it. So what we're gonna do while we're here is just grab a rag and clean off our old oil from our inboard splines. Try and get inside that set ring groove the best you can without leaving too much debris from the rag behind. So we're gonna use a pair of snap ring pliers. You're gonna be careful with this is there's nowhere for the teeth to sit into or the tops to sit into. So you don't want it to fly across the room. But with these, we're just gonna squeeze it open. Just enough to get it over and into place. Now that that's in place, we're just gonna come back and squeeze that just a little tighter. By nature of this, we may have opened that up just a little bit. All right, so now we're just gonna squeeze that set ring back together just a little bit. All right, now what we can do is put a little grease on our shaft. We are not gonna cover every groove we're going to try and leave a few slots open for air and pressure to relieve from. Put just a little dab around our set ring. Now we can install our axle shaft. All right, so now we can install our CV axle shaft. We're just going to put it onto our splines on the inside, on the intermediate. And if you remember, there is a, that round set ring that's in there. We're gonna have to put some pressure inward to get past that set ring and lock the CV axle into place. So what you might have to do to line this up is push your knuckle out of the way so you can get your axle shaft up into position. So we're gonna do that now. 
All right, so once we aligned our axle shafts onto the splines, you'll have to clock it into position so the splines line up. Getting past your new set ring might be a little bit of a pain. Just keep working it, try and center it, uh, and then slide your CV axle shaft into position. On the outboard side, what we did is we used a rubber mallet to hit it this way into position. All right, so to get your now your axle shaft into the hub, what you're gonna have to do is move your knuckle as much as you can, and then get your axle lined up and into position. All right, once you've got it mostly into position, before we move any further, we're gonna put a little grease on the splines of your new axle. All right, so now we can put a little grease on our shaft. We're not gonna coat every single spline, but we're gonna get most. And around the base of the shaft. And now what we can do is put it into the knuckle. Now there are obviously splines, so you may have to rotate until you're clocked into position. We are obviously not clocked into position with our splines from our CV axle and our hub meeting. So what we're gonna do is just make sure our axle shaft is as back as far as it can go without fully falling out. We're just gonna rotate our caliper hub bearing assembly just a little bit, see if that lines up better. There we go. Now again, don't pull forward on your axle shaft. What you're gonna do is push your knuckle into it. You don't wanna separate your axle shaft on the backside. All right, so you'll get to a certain point where you can, what you need to do is push down on your control arm and make sure the control arm mount is free from on the knuckle from hitting it. And you can push your knuckle back into position. Now at this point, what we're gonna do is put our axle nut on here just to hold the axle all the way through. This is the old one. We will be replacing it with a new one. This is just a placeholder to keep the axle somewhat in position. All right, so now what we're gonna do is put our ball joint back into the knuckle. What we're gonna do is use a long pry bar on here, up to the front cradle. And because our whole control arm is a little loose, it should, should move somewhat freely. We can locate our ball joint into the knuckle but you can see we're still off a little bit. So we'll have to push our knuckle into position. And put our ball joint back into place. All right, so now we can install our castle nut onto our ball joint. At this point, we're just snugging everything up. We're gonna come back and tighten everything down and torque everything down to the factory specs. We're just gonna get everything lined up and snugged up. All right, so now that we have everything somewhat in place, we're gonna take our place-holding axle nut, throw that in the trash, take our new axle nut. We've put just a little bit of oil around the back side here, and we can thread this on by hand. Snug it up, and we'll come back, make sure everything's where it needs to be, and torque it all down. All right, so we're just about there to tighten up our castle nut and our ball joint. What we want to do before we get there or even close is put some tension or some resistance on our suspension. Basically what you want to do is mimic a, lo a vehicle load on your suspension. So we're going to raise it. Now that we have some upward pressure to resemble if it was on the ground under load, we can now snug up our castle nut and the rest of our suspension that we moved. So that is snugged up. We can come back and torque that to spec. But before we do that, 
Let's also tighten down our control arm while it's under load. With a 22 millimeter socket, we'll go ahead and snug up our control arm bolt as well. Okay. All right, so now we're gonna torque down our castle nut and our ball joint. I'm gonna torque it down to 83 foot pounds. And because of where it is, we're gonna use a crow's foot on a torque wrench. All right, now with your cotter pin, if your cotter pin hole does not line up, try taking the castle nut off and retightening it again until it does line up, but you do not want to back off your castle nut to fit your cotter pin in. You just keep tightening. And in our case, ours lines up. So you can just push the cotter pin through and on the back side, on this specific cotter pin, you have to pull the side open. And push it through. So it locks in. If you really want to, you can pull back on it just to make sure it's locked. All right, so now because we loosened up our control arm bolt to give us a little bit more play, we have to torque this back down. It'll be 119 foot pounds. So now that our suspension components are tightened and torqued down under compression or under load of the vehicle, we can remove our pole jack, or at this point you could remove your jack or jack stand, whatever you have under. All right, and for us, at this point, we'll have to raise the lift. And we can remove our pole jack. All right, so now we're onto our axle nut. What we have now is the vehicle lowered down to the point where we can put a large pry bar right, right here between the studs and the ground. That'll stop our wheel from rotating. What we also have is our new axle nut, which is a 36 millimeter. We'll torque this down to 246 foot pounds. We're gonna just get that 36 millimeter set, put our pry bar in place, and torque it down. All right, now that that's torqued down, you can see here we have a notch. We're gonna have to stake down or punch down our axle nut into that notch so it doesn't back off. All right, so what we're gonna do to punch this down, we're just gonna use a punch. We're gonna put it in place. And we're gonna hammer it down into place. All right, that should be staked down. So we're just gonna not torque these, but just tighten them up and we'll come back and torque them. All right, so now we can torque down our lug nuts. We're gonna tighten them down to 94 foot pounds. Again, we're gonna use a 22 millimeter socket for that. We're gonna do them in a crisscross pattern. After finishing this installation, it's important to have an alignment done on your vehicle. When only the best will do, demand TRQ. The only company that lets you view before you do. TRQ is committed to offering the highest quality aftermarket auto parts that are engineered for peace of mind. Thanks for using and viewing with TRQ.